everyone, and welcome to the Undisputed Heavyweight Champion of the World show made for the fans by a fan. I am your host, as always, Richard Tiemann, and this is the award-winning fan show. Good to see ya. Good to see ya, Fan Nation. I do love these Tuesday episodes. It's the start of a new fan show week because we don't do Mondays. No, no, no. We don't do Mondays. We do Tuesdays, though, and Tuesdays are awesome. And we're here. We had a whole weekend to sort of take in and think about and process. And now we're ready to talk about it. And then we're going to look ahead to the week that's to come. And then, of course, Thursday, we will break down the week and look forward to a new weekend. I know, time flies when you're having fun, and before I get too far into today's episode, this episode is a special one. It is brought to you by Fat Bearded Vinyl Guy. That's right, the Matt Kerwick blog that he does for music. In fact, we're gonna gonna give that thing a, a better shot here. That guy right there, fat bearded vinyl guy is the place. And uh, I love the shirt. I got to say, I'm very excited to have official merch of fat bearded vinyl guy. And so with that, I welcome all of you once again. I see some of you have already tuned in to the Facebook Live, which is what we do as part of our simulcast every Tuesday and Thursday. Podcast is available immediately following on Spreaker, iTunes, SoundCloud, Spotify, and iHeart radio so if you miss any of the live action you can always replay that on facebook as well but if you're more of the listening type then there are several flavors of fan show available to everyone out there let's think about how we want to do this episode because this is a, a bit of a difficult episode really um which we will get to more with our headlines but i think you know for a lot of us It's the elephant in the room right now. Um, Kobe Bryant passed away. And I, again, I go back to using the term passed away. Now, he was tragically killed suddenly, unexpectedly, in a helicopter crash, along with his uh, 13-year-old daughter, Gigi. And then, of course, there were seven other passengers, including the pilot, who perished in the helicopter crash as well. Another coach, uh, a husband, wife, and their daughter. I mean, just very tragic all the way around. And it's not something that's easy to talk about. It's not something that I enjoy talking about on the fan show, but obviously it is something to talk about. And so we're going to talk about it a little bit here as we get through our headlines today. So without further ado or any more delay, here are today's headlines. Headlines, of course, brought to you by Dynamite Enterprises. They can customize your world, and it's fairly simple. All you have to do is visit dynamiteenterprises.com. Let them know what you like, what you're into, and see if they can do something custom for you in the way of promotion, personal, business, or other. I have had plenty of stuff done by them and uh, am extremely satisfied with the product. So if you know what you want, you can hit up Ethan directly, Ethan at dynamiteenterprises.com. Or if you're not quite sure you're on the cusp, kind of on the fence about what you may want done, then go to dynamiteenterprises.com, view their full catalog. I strongly urge you to go and follow them on Instagram. It's a great place to see all the things that they've done and continue to try and do for the first time. Uh, They always post new photos, uh, usually in clusters of things that they've done recently. They do everything from business cards, shirts, hats, beanies. They do tablecloths, backdrops, plaques, trophies, even belts now. And uh, pretty much anything else that you can think that you would like to have your logo or artwork on, they can do it. And just tell them that the fan show sent you and they're going to make sure that you are one satisfied customer. So we have our headlines today. And uh, I think I forgot. Did I forget to mute the thing? Did I... No, I didn't. Okay, so we have our headlines, and headline number one, I think, goes without saying, it is Kobe Bryant. So here's the thing that I will say about this. One, uh, most of you know I am not a huge 
basketball fan. I do follow sports in general enough to know kind of the postseason picture, uh, hockey, baseball, not so much soccer, but NBA definitely. And then, of course, um, when it comes to the NBA, the finals, uh, I would say my ranking of, of sports and my interest go – uh, football and then basketball, hockey, and then probably baseball, soccer. But it, the funny thing is that with football, you have NFL football, XFL, IFL. You know, you have so many different versions of football that it's not like it's just NFL football and then everything else is a distant second. No, there's several layers of football to my interest cake, so to speak. But basketball, uh, it's definitely up there. And the one reason that I'm not a huge basketball fan is because of dynasties. You seem to see a lot of dynasties at um, in basketball, in baseball. And I think for me, it just kind of turns me off to, I, I like parody. You know, um, football has fallen victim to the dynasty of the New England Patriots. And that's been difficult. It's not to say that the seasons aren't any less entertaining, but... I will continue to make the argument that football is a true team sport where basketball and baseball, uh, maybe hockey, are ones where, you know, just one guy can really make a difference. Um, and so that to me, it, you know, depending on how free agency works out, who ends up where, I mean, there can be surprises, absolutely. But it's it's harder to really get excited for a sport that you know who the, the final four guys or teams are going to be. Kobe Bryant, however, was somebody who, when it comes to the world of sports and just the world in general, um, you would have to try really hard to not know who he is. Um, he is an Academy Award winner for a short film. The man was a pop culture icon um, right around the same time as Michael Jordan was making his exit from NBA Kobe was starting to really become the guy, the new poster child, the new franchise, and then, of course, LeBron. So you had, I mean, if you're a basketball fan, you were spoiled as all hell with, you had Jordan, and then Kobe, and then LeBron, I mean, and then you can throw in other names in there, like you had Iverson, you had Shaq, you had Penny Hardaway, I, I mean, Dennis Rodman, there was, for an era of time, there was a lot of really good basketball. And of course, Kobe is, everybody likes to make the LeBron MJ comparison and talk about who is the greatest of all time. And Kobe's just kind of sitting there in between rock and hard place like, hey, <laughs> don't forget about me. Uh, we will never forget Kobe. And that's the, the tragic thing that death brings is that now we have uh, a loss of an icon like Kobe Bryant. And how do we cope with that? I'm not trying to take away from anybody's uh, feelings of guilt because basketball was not my forte. It is not my forte. So if you were somebody who idolized Kobe growing up and uh, you were a huge fan of him and he just he changed your world, so to speak, I'm not trying to pull anything over on my side as far as sympathy goes it's a headline it's sports I wanted to acknowledge it and talk about it but you know feel how you're gonna feel because I'm clearly not someone who is devastated by this but I know enough people that are and I think whatever time or morning period you need uh, for the loss of a Kobe Bryant take it because if it was Patrick Willis if it was Steve Young if it was hell um Travis Barker, uh, Chris Jericho, Shawn Michaels, The Rock. I mean, I've had a lot of people that I've looked up to and that have really inspired me. And I could only imagine, you know, if one of them was suddenly gone, how that would make me feel. In fact, Travis Barker probably was the closest one uh, to having that kind of an impact in my life. He survived the plane crash uh, miraculously, but uh, many with him did not. Um but I remember he was such a heavy influence uh, on me as far as wanting to become a drummer and the style of drummer that I wanted to be. I thought he was so innovative and he's done so many amazing things for the world of drumming. When that happened and when I saw that headline, uh, it was there was a lump in my throat and there was this just empty feeling in my stomach. You know, somebody that you look up to that inspires you in such a way uh, for them to suddenly be gone it's it's a tough pill to swallow so i was not a huge 
a Kobe fan. I, you know, I don't follow the NBA, but I understand his impact on the world, not just of sports, but altogether. So if you were somebody that idolized Kobe, that really, you know, understood what it was that he did for the world of sports uh, and just the impact he had collectively, I feel for you. I do. Um, Can't imagine what it is that you're going through, but I understand, you know, that feeling to an extent. So take your time. Take uh, a moment. Take, you know, reflect. Enjoy the memories. I made a post on the Fan Show's Facebook page that said, "If, if this is to teach us anything, it's that time is precious and moments are even more precious. But of course, to celebrate uh, the memories, because in the end, that's all we really have. I invited Omar Cook on my show tonight. Great to have him back. He had a Kobe memory he wanted to share. Um, He's feeling it um, like uh, a lot of guys I know out there that have been kind of all around athletes. They played baseball, basketball, football. For a lot of guys in the world of football, it was either football or basketball. And uh, for a lot of them, Kobe Bryant was why they wanted to be basketball stars. Football ultimately is what they stuck with. But, um, you know, just to to see the world lose somebody who impacted so many people in such a positive way is really tough. So uh, we remember Kobe Bryant. We remember what he stood for both on and off the court. And the world is forever changed. It will not be the same without him. And it wasn't the same with him. So um, in memory of Kobe Bryant, his daughter Gigi and the seven other people that perished in that crash, uh, our thoughts and prayers are with you here at the Fan Show. And um, yeah, please share his videos, share his highlights, um, and celebrate his memory. Because that's all we've got in the end. In other news, um, not to just quickly segue or move on, but obviously, you know, we've got plenty of show left, and I don't want it to be all a downer. I think we've had, you know, what, three days to (coughs) fully process, two and a half, really process losing Kobe Bryant. But um, obviously, the Super Bowl is this Sunday, so we're just five days away from Super Bowl 54 with the 49ers and the Chiefs. And that is on Fox. And then also we are 39 days away from an all new indoor football league season. The 2020 IFL season will kick off in just 39 days time. And then the XFL is only 11 days away. So we have the epic conclusion of the 100th season of the National Football League. Then we will have the official kickoff of the uh, reincarnation of the XFL. And then we will have kickoff for the 2020 season of the Indoor Football League. Also, Chargers are moving on from Philip Rivers, uh, whatever moving on means. Uh, it was apparently reported earlier by Jay Glazer that the Chargers have decided to move on from Philip Rivers as quarterback. I guess Philip Rivers already lives in Florida. He moved, he went and moved his family from California to Florida. I I don't understand this situation. It's very confusing to me because I I don't know how you just so um I don't see how you just sweep somebody like Philip Rivers under the rug if you're the Chargers. It makes no sense to me whatsoever. Uh it really doesn't. I'm just so baffled by how it came to this. And the Chargers are not well known for their uh, tact or their uh, amazing decisions, uh, but you know, a guy like Philip Rivers gives you pretty much his entire career, and now what you're ghosting him? I okay, well, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Anyway, um, so where will Philip Rivers land? I think is a good question today. Also feel free in the comments on the Facebook live. And then of course, if you hear this after the fact, then on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, uh, at the fan sh- or, uh, at the fan show is the Instagram and at fan show official is for Facebook and Twitter. You know, I think if you guys want to share your Kobe memories, um, a game you watched, a highlight, or something that impacted you, feel free to share those. But uh, yeah, Philip Rivers, 
moving on um, from the, I feel like it's a mutual separation, but one that like neither party wants to talk about. It's just, it's so awkward. It's so, so awkward. However, notable free agents, I didn't even realize this until I saw the tweet. Notable free agents then for the 2020 season uh, are going to be Philip Rivers, possibly Drew Brees, Teddy Bridgewater, Tom Brady, and uh, a handful of others. But man, uh, considering that we already have a good idea that Joe Burrow will go to the Cincinnati Bengals unless somebody wants to trade up for him, free agency class doesn't look so bad. You only get... I don't know how many years you get with Brady if you sign him. Do you sign him to a one- or two-year deal? Do you sign him to more than that? And the same with Rivers and uh, Breeze. I don't know how many years you sign them as free agents, but, man, that's got to make an immediate impact on your team. I think, in all honesty, if I'm a team that doesn't have a pick in the top 10 and I'm not wanting to trade away my whole future just to get a quarterback, I would probably go after Teddy Bridgewater. I would. I think he proved that he deserves to be a starting quarterback uh, and at that, maybe a franchise quarterback. But clearly, (coughs) the divorce between Breeze and the New Orleans Saints, I don't think will happen. I don't know if Brady will ever leave the Patriots. Um, It seems like we're starting to get into that uncharted, awkward territory with Brady and the Patriots right now. But I think uh, if you're the New Orleans Saints, you have uh, one Hall of Fame quarterback that's still got it. You have another quarterback that's very good uh, that you don't quite know. If the price is right, I would say um, you go for Teddy Bridgewater because I think the Saints, you know, that I, I, you got to think about the future, but you also can't forget the present. I think they're going to hang on to Breeze as long as they can. And. Obviously, Sean Payton has been incredible with both Breeze and um, Teddy Bridgewater that I don't know if it's not something that whoever they get, um, whether it's through the draft, which they have a very late pick, but they could they could move up. I don't know what pieces they need on the team as a whole that they would need multiple draft picks for, but they could they can move up. They could get uh, the, the guy that they want uh, late in the first Um early in the second as far as who they want, if they're going to let go of Bridgewater. But that'll be a very interesting place to see. Uh, I think Cam Newton might end up somewhere else and maybe even Jameis Winston. Let's see. Adam says, honestly, I think it was more Rivers being like, screw this, I'm out. I don't blame him. Do you, if that is the case, would you blame him? I wouldn't blame him. Nigel says, Philip Rivers needs to play for Tampa or Carolina. Um, hmm. What what team is a good fit for Philip Rivers? That's a question. What team is a good fit for Philip Rivers? Um, is it Tampa? I mean, so I okay. Here's the thing: if if you are Philip Rivers and you go to Tampa, where there's Bruce Arians, uh, you clearly have weapons on offense, right? You've got Mike Evans to throw to, but he had Keenan Allen to throw to in San Diego, and it wasn't a quarterback issue. It wasn't you know, really an issue that he had any control over. It's like, okay, so what are you going to do to support me in this? Like, what are you going to give other than weapons for me to throw to? Like, are you going to protect me with the line? Are you going to get the ball back with the defense? Like, what are we doing here? And San Diego just really failed to address that. And I keep saying San Diego, they're at the LA chargers, whatever. Okay. So if you're the, if you're rivers and you go from LA from the chargers, let's just leave it at the chargers. If you go from the chargers to Tampa Bay, do you feel like that's a better fit for you? Like Bruce Arians obviously probably is going to look out for you better than the Chargers did, but as a whole, are they in the right mindset to build and move forward? And how how many years do you get out of Rivers? I didn't think that they were a team that was really on the bubble where you plug in a Phillip Rivers and suddenly that makes you a playoff team. But I'm not a, a Buccaneers fan. I'm not going to know exactly what what it looks like internally as far as you know how close are they could they be a worst to first story like san francisco it's a rare thing but clearly it can happen um adam says tampa has a decent team they just had a famous Jameis and his turnover bakery very true uh so you have philip rivers then does that 
solve all your problems or at least enough that now you're in the talk to be a playoff contender. I don't know. Um, Rivers to Carolina, though, doesn't feel like it fit. But without Ron Rivera, I don't really know what fits with Carolina now. Uh, I don't know what their plan is going to be. I don't know if they're hoping to hang on to um, to Cam Newton. I don't know where Cam Newton is going to go. But uh, obviously, Ron Rivera has found a new home in Washington. What is his plan going to be with that? Does it include possibly Cam Newton? Or do you stick with uh, with Haskins? Um, I don't know. I, I do not know what you do if you're Carolina. That's a, a bunch of question marks right there that I think are really going to determine what to watch. You know, there's one domino to fall, and it's probably Phillip Rivers or Cam Newton, maybe even Tom Brady. But you have a few dominoes, and when one of them falls, the rest will fall. But there's a few yet to fall, and I, I think it's going to be a while before they start to do. Uh, Adam says Rivers to the Cowboys. I don't think they're going to let go of Dak. They already let go of Garrett, and that was probably hard enough for old Jerry. Um, I don't think – if you're the Cowboys, I don't think you get rid of Dak Prescott. But what teams need a quarterback that – well, if you're Minnesota, you can't pay for another quarterback because you just paid for Kirk Cousins. I would say, God, man, Phillip Rivers in Minnesota, That's that has – NFC championship potential written all over it. You put Phillip Rivers on a team where there's an established defense. Now you have a guy for a couple of years that you can obviously spend your draft picks and money and free agency on making sure that he's protected with an O-line. And then he's got Cook, he's got Thielen, he's got Diggs. I mean, if Rivers went to Minnesota, they are playoff team without a doubt but nfc championship or super bowl contender early on absolutely i don't get that same feeling from cousins i know that it's not all his fault but i feel like even with the age difference that rivers is the superior quarterback to Kirk cousins that would be a great fit for rivers now that i think about it cam newton's ideal fit is probably with ron rivera but i feel like ron was ready to maybe well, what the Chargers did, move on from Cam Newton. So maybe he has other plans in Washington. And then, of course, what are the Buccaneers going to do at the quarterback position? Um, <laughs> obviously, <laughs> Rivers and the Vikings won't happen because he just moved from California to Florida and probably doesn't plan on spending any time in Minnesota. But if the price was right, I'm, I'm getting too far down avenues that it really can't happen. Um, you guys think on that because there's other headlines I got to get into here. So again, if you have a Kobe memory, um, where do you think Philip Rivers will end up? What's the one sort of uh, domino in free agency in the offseason that you feel needs to fall for the others to fall? Is it Brady? Is it Rivers? Or is it um, Cam Newton? You know what? What? Where is who going to end up? I did watch the Royal Rumble. And I got to say, it was the first wrestling uh, of any kind other than some AEW, but it was really the first WWE wrestling I've watched since, uh, well, before Survivor Series. I did not watch Survivor Series. I don't know what the last one was I watched. But anyway, um, watch the Rumble because it's the Rumble. And I, I got to say, look, the, the Brock Lesnar thing was very interesting. It was entertaining for a while, but you got to think this is a four hour pay per view program. It is one of the big four, as they call it. And you're going to have a guy out there who is already your champion that enters himself at number one. And if you were one, if you were two through 15, you're probably pretty pissed off because you went out on a four hour pay per view and gave all of 30 seconds, maybe to a guy that gets paid way more than you to show up less than half the time. If I'm one of those guys, I'm livid. It was entertaining because it turned into a glorified gauntlet match. But man, um, once he was out, it had the feel of a regular rumble. Uh, Edge returning was awesome. Drew McIntyre uh, winning was great. Ricochet in there. Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins. All of that was great. Very well done. But that first half of the Rumble, man, if I'm Kofi, if I'm uh, Elias, if I'm any of those guys that he was so quick to to throw over that top row, even Keith Lee and Braun Strowman, if I'm those guys, I'm so livid that that is how I spent the Royal Rumble. Um, it's supposed to be 
one, a reminder that there's still certain guys on the roster, but two, an opportunity to get matchups that you normally don't. And then obviously for stars to have kind of an opportunity to shine where you don't have to make a match specifically for them. Charlotte Flair winning the women's Royal Rumble, probably inevitable. Um, I don't know if I would have done it now. I feel like there's uh, so many other women that needed uh, that could have used that spotlight, that push. Charlotte doesn't for sure uh, at all. But it, you knew it was bound to happen. And then as far as those entrants, Santina returning. Oh, my God. Um, Santina. Wow. <laughs> he took the spot of so many women that should have. I'm, I'm a little sad about that. But that's a, a topic for another time. So overall, it was a very interesting Royal Rumble. The right guy as far as for the men's Rumble won. Uh, the edge return was great. And then, uh, like I said, I'm indifferent, kind of over the whole Brock Lesnar thing. Uh, in outdoors news, I attended Ice Fish Fest 2020, my first ever ice fishing event. I even tried a little bit of ice fishing for about 20 minutes, but that was a lot of fun. Um, if you're ever in the South Dakota area next January, I highly recommend registering and going because it is, uh, you, you wouldn't believe how much fun it is unless you were actually there and saw how much fun it was. But yeah, it's, uh, it's crazy. There's so many prizes being given away. Uh, you'd be uh, crazy to not try if you're at least thinking, if you're a passionate ice fisherman, which I know there's plenty of you out there that watch this show. Yes. Uh, you should definitely go. Uh, in music news, there were the Grammys. I didn't watch. Um, I did see the opening and the tribute to Kobe Bryant by Alicia Keys and Boyz II Men. I thought that was very tasteful and well done on their part, but I just can't. I can't watch the Grammys anymore. It's just so watered down. Um, really, I just no. Uh, in movie news or pop culture, I guess you would say, uh, John Cena has been promoting that the Fast Nine trailer that's right fast and furious remember that movie from way back when that was just about cars and a terrible storyline featuring vin diesel and paul walker yeah there's a ninth one of those coming out (laughs) it's got john cena now (laughs) i'm sure it'll be very entertaining it'll be one of those summer movies but yeah uh that's your pop culture news robotics news it looks like we're getting closer to having an official word on whether or not battle bots will have a season five and let's see we did wrestling outdoors music pop culture uh robotics okay and then sports so that brings us back to sports so yeah kobe bryant will be missed uh very sad about that but we do have the ifl season to look forward to i got my interview with omar cook coming up here real quick i think that that was um a great conversation between omar and myself and i hope that you guys certainly enjoy it but other than that anybody got memories of kobe that they want to share or where they think philip rivers and company will end up by uh, brady where he's gonna go i'm just excited for the super bowl like it it's hit me that we are uh in the home stretch for the super bowl very very exciting time uh oh And the IFL meetings, the owners and coaches winter meetings, the last one before the season, um, have officially concluded today. And I'm excited to hear what's going on with the league as far as rule changes, media, um, all the different things that uh, we can look forward to for this season. And then, of course, the 2021 season when there's even more changes happening. So we have that. Um, but other than that, uh, I think we pretty much covered everything. One more big shout out to, uh, Matt fat bearded vinyl guy. Um, I love the shirt. It fits great. It's red. And I like that. So, um, props to you, sir. And, uh, keep, keep doing your thing. Keep doing what you're doing. So without further ado or any more delay, uh, please enjoy my conversation with Omar Cook DB from the San Diego strike force. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the fan show. One of my favorite guys. He is Omar Cook of the San Diego Strike Force and a lot of other things. He's got quite the resume now. How you doing, my man? Welcome back. Man, I'm awesome, man. I'm just getting ready for a new season. I'm excited uh, I'm excited to get this popping. You know, it's going to be exciting. Yeah, you do um, great work with Madden, of course, up in Canada. <clears throat> and then um, what's the show that you've been on? Um, man, I've been on All American um, as a football player for the show. Um, so I did all of season two, and um, I've done uh, actually eight other network shows uh, wow. in the past few months. So it's been pretty cool, honestly. 
So, so I did a I did a SWAT um show called Broke Mom uh sixty eight whiskey um all rise um uh, no I'm missing a couple um but yeah you know I've kind of been all over the place. <laughs> That's crazy, man. So indoor yeah. football is almost like kind of a hobby thing now for you. Um, <laughs> I don't want to say it's like a hobby thing, but uh, I definitely have some other things going for sure. You know, you know. So you know, I try to look at it as uh, as a professional, of course, and um, to do everything to the best of my ability, whatever it is. Absolutely, man. Well, hey, you do it well. I got to say, though, you posted a clip of season two and uh, you, you let a guy score on you. And I know it's acting, man, but you, you got to <laughs> not you got to tell the director, be like, I, bro, I got people watching. I can't get burnt on this. Like, even if it right. is, you know, <laughs> for television. <laughs> I told him I told him that, too, man. I was like, man, every episode y'all got me out here getting burnt. Man. I need a good. <laughs> 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 like people are gonna start thinking I'm I'm trash or something. Like I need some good play. <laughs> oh, it's too funny. It's a yeah. good thing that that's not your highlight film that you're sending to teams or whatever. But uh, oh, absolutely, it's too funny. I couldn't pass it up, especially because of all the comments <laughs> that you got last year when you announced that you were coming back. I had you on the show, and who was it? Uh, Mike Green that was giving you some right, right, some right. service there. <laughs> <laughs> yes sir <laughs> it's gonna be fun playing against them this year it's gonna be cool absolutely that i cannot wait for so yes uh 2020 season we are under 50 days away from the kickoff and of course san diego strike force you know you guys had a season last year uh as far as expansion teams go and expe- expectations go i mean really it- it's hard to say that you guys did all right when there was also Tucson, but a lot of people don't understand that your guys' world in San Diego and Tucson's world in Arizona uh, were very, very different scenarios um, as far as ownership, GM, and just kind of the, the way that the world of indoor football works. So you guys had a little bit of a makeover in the off season. You guys got a new logo, some new threads, uh, and just everything seems like it's been turned up a notch when I don't know right. if that was the plan all along, if that, you know, if front office felt like that was needed, but what's, you know, you're there, uh, you're with the team. What, what's it been like right. for you? Like, how does it feel like it's gone in the off season? Oh man, it, it feels like a complete turnaround. Um, everything from just the front office to the players, man. Um, you know, Ryan Nuker is a great GM. Um, he's pretty well known in this uh in this league, and he's doing he's done a great job in the front office, and um so he's brought in some great people um uh, as far as people that are get helping us get out in the community. Um, you've seen a lot of social media posts about us doing community events. That's become like a weekly uh thing. A lot of guys um here are local, so we're able to kind of get out together and um be able to be out in the events, and I think that's great. Uh, as an organization, that kind of gives us an advantage because a lot of the other teams are in the middle of nowhere. Um, and us being here as locals, we can kind of connect and um, kind of bond together as a team. So and, if... uh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, but, yeah, I, I'm excited, man, uh, just to see, you know, a lot of the makeovers, like you said, new new uniforms, new uh, logos, uh, just whole rebranding process. Um, the guys are really committed to making this um, a first-class organization. I'm excited. You know, San Diego is a great city, and I don't see why we wouldn't have a successful season this year. Yeah, last month I ran into, uh, or I guess still technically this month, we're at the end of January, but uh, first week of January I was down in Texas. I ran into Ernesto Lacayo, your guys' kicker, and uh, he had some positive things to say about the organization as far as the direction they're headed. I know that there was some things that seemed unclear last year as it got past the midway point, and it's, you know, like, is this team going to, you know, last? Is it going to be around for a while? What's going to happen with coaching and personnel? And I feel like, you know, there's certain things that needed to change, others that didn't. Um, I don't know if I would have gone as far as rebranding and new uniforms, but I do feel like with that, it's kind of rejuvenated uh, a franchise, even if it was only a year old. So, uh, you know, may not have been needed, but it was definitely appreciated. And now to see you guys do work out in the community, how's that reception been? Is it like a night and day difference? Is it? Uh, do you feel like it's uh, helped a lot as far as your guys' ticket sales go for the upcoming season 
Um, absolutely. You know, um, as far as like the rebranding process, I think they um, initially ch- I think they changed it because they kind of rushed and put the, the logo together um, from the start. Um, so the colors and um, basically the logo now is more of a it's more it's more in tune with the community. You know, uh, San Diego's a, a military community, mm-hmm. and so these these colors are really. Um, touching on that and as far as the military personnel that's in san diego so i think that's uh going to help us a lot um and community has been great the community response has been great all of our events have been um fulfilling you know there's been a lot of people that have come out um kids parents you know just depending on what kind of event it is it's been it's been great we've really connected with them um we've passed out some tickets and uh signed up a lot of people uh, for tickets so uh the buzz around the city is, is a lot greater um so i really expect there to be a lot more support than there was last year last year it wasn't like it wasn't a lot of hype um surrounding the san diego team it was just kind of like okay we got san diego team you know what i'm saying in town now it's like okay the san diego strike force are in town you know what I mean? it's kind of a more of a, a name you know and being that there's no nfl teams in that area we are the professional team and there's no aaf team over there either um it's going to make things a lot better um going forward so i'm really excited honestly yeah, it's a very exciting time um, on the show the last several weeks, uh, last couple of months. We've talked about how competitive the field looks for this 2020 season. You mentioned uh, going up against Mike Green, who will be up in Spokane with Billy Back. And we've got the uh, the Storm, the Rattlers, Tucson with a new head coach, Iowa with a new head coach, uh, both guys that are have been in the league before. Um, and of course, Dixie, who's got a fantastic resume, um, Amir Ishmael, who's got a good resume as a coordinator. And then now of course is a head coach as of late. And then you guys, uh, you guys get new neighbors, uh, to the North, uh, Oakland, and they've got a minority owner and Marshawn Lynch. And it looks like they're doing, uh, stuff pretty good as well. And, you know, preparation for their inaugural season. How's that been having a, a new kid on the block in your guys' estate? You guys aren't the only team in Cali anymore. Um, honestly, I think for me, I think that's dope. You know, being from California, uh, I mean, we've had uh, Marina teams come in and out, you know, with the LA Kiss, uh, the LA Avengers growing up, and um, obviously uh, the uh, San Jose uh, Sabercats up there. Um, so to have two teams, um, back in place, you know, where it's the San Diego team in Oakland. I think it's going to be super exciting, those two matchups, um, you know, to kind of do a home and away contest with them, um, you know, kind of crown some champions of Cali. You know, SoCal is, like, really big as far as football goes here in California, and I feel like it's, there's a lot of pride that's going to go into playing in that kind of game, especially with a lot of guys being from here in Southern California, playing against the Northern, uh, Northern Cal guys. Um, that's going to be major. I think the – the league in general just has a lot more competition, competitive players. Uh, the talent is going up. Um, I mean, it's my fifth year in the league, and this is probably the best field I've seen as far as guys signing. So I think it's going to be super, super competitive, super exciting. I don't think there's going to be, like, a big competitive difference like there's been in the past years where it's like Sioux Falls or Arizona or Iowa's been dominant. I think those teams are going to be good, but I don't think it's going to be, like, so far above everyone that one team is just you know 15 and 0 14 and 0. I think there's going to be a lot uh, a lot closer games um, and some better records honestly. Yeah, I, I think you know my way too early season prediction just based on the transactions and the roster signings and things like that and the coaches being placed where they are. I, I see the winner of this season is probably going to be one with two or three losses. I I don't think there's going to be a team that goes undefeated or only has like that one mark against their record. I think we're looking at a two or three loss team that goes through and ends up winning this whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. I can definitely see that happening for sure. So what's the vibe going in? Like, do you guys have like a hashtag or, you know, a mission for, for this year? Because it's only year two, but obviously you, you're kind of, you know, year one was like your, your trial run. And now year two is when you guys, you have the new look, you have the new gear, you have uh, the new mindset. What is that mindset down there for the strike force? Um, the whole mindset, man, is really just bringing football back to San Diego. Um, you know, with the Chargers leaving, 
Um, that's obviously leaving a void there. You know, San Diego is a sports community, especially with the Padres being there. Um, so it's just really trying to bring um, a winning team to the community. Uh, SoCal, like I said, really big um, in the sports community. Um, it's like an expectation to win out here. Uh, so that's really what we want to do. And I feel like us being here in Southern California, so much talent, there's no reason why we shouldn't have one of the best teams in the league. Um, just from the talent that we can pull from. And I think the front office did a really great job of going out and getting those guys. Um, so we really just want to be competitive. That's really the whole vibe. It's really kind of like a winner bust type of season for us. You know what I mean? Um, anything else besides a, a, a playoff berth and some victories is going to be disappointing. Yeah, man, I get that. I think you guys are going to be one of those competitive teams. I don't think it's going to be a down year for you guys. I think uh, it was a lot of learning. Um, and like I said, you know, when I talked to uh, Ernesto, he said, yeah, I think that we've got uh, a much better a game plan, so to speak, in place for this upcoming season. So good. I'm looking forward to that, looking forward to you guys competing and having a really competitive field all around um you know all 13 teams in the league i think it's really going to be something special um for you though uh of course we lost kobe bryant uh this last week and i know that you were someone that uh kind of idolized kobe and uh you know really looked up to to him as an athlete now i didn't i'm not what you would call like an avid basketball fan but uh you'd have to pretty much not follow sports at all uh, or really even pop culture or, you know, live a very secluded life to not know who Kobe Bryant was and the kind of impact and legacy he left uh, not only on basketball, but just the world altogether as far as uh, sports, being a competitor, an athlete, and then, of course, life beyond the game and everything that he did for communities and such. What's a memory that you have uh, of Kobe that really stands out to you as far as growing up uh, in a world with Kobe Bryant? Oh, man, so many. Um, You know, um, I'm from here, so, like, I'm – uh, I guess I grew up, I'm a 90s baby, so growing up, uh, all I've seen was Kobe, you know what I'm saying, um, throughout my whole sports life, pretty much. And, um, I mean, I was here when Kobe won, uh, won a three-peat in, you know, 2007, won 2002 with the Lakers. Um, and really had the city going, really had a lot of buzz, you know what I'm saying? You think of Lakers, you think of Kobe. Um, so, even when he wasn't playing with the Lakers, it still was, you know, that's Kobe's team, you know what I'm saying? Even then. LeBron's on the team now. It's still Kobe's team, you know what I mean? Um, so he built that kind of legacy here. Uh, I just remember being a kid, you know, always having, always getting new shoes that he came out with. Um, I played basketball growing up. That was my number one sport. So, I mean, everybody wanted to be like Kobe. Um, Kobe, Allen Iverson, I feel like those were two of the biggest trendsetters uh, growing up. And to lose him, you know, I was driving by Staples Center, uh, couple of days ago or the day that it happened and um it just felt so like eerie a little bit almost like we had a great energy that kind of just left the city you know what i mean um it kind of feels kind of empty a little bit it's like unreal like kobe you know of all people not that anybody's life is greater than the next person but man that's unfortunate you know what i mean it's a huge loss to the community um to the world of course he made a major impact on the world you know what i'm saying um, but definitely here in the, uh, in the LA community, Lakers organization. And, um, there's going to be kids growing up now, you know, that, uh, you know, that are young now, that are going to grow up never getting to actually see Kobe. And you're going to have to tell them, you know, who the legend of Kobe is, you know what I mean? And, um, that's crazy to think that, uh, he's not on earth with us anymore. Um, I guess like one of my most, indi- my favorite individual moments was, Shoot, when he dropped 81 points, you know what I mean? Like, to see somebody drop 81 points in the game, uh, that's unreal. That's, like, superhero-like. Um, so, I basically, I feel like we watched a superhero in real life, you know what I mean? We got to experience that, and um, I'm just thankful I lived in a time where I was able to see that. Um, and uh, I don't know if we'll ever see another competitor like Kobe was. Um, we'll see it. I don't know. We're going to see a lot more talented guys, but He's a once in a generation type of person, you know, once in a generation type of soul. And I'm just thankful that I was able to see him live. You know, I've been to a few games, and so I'm very thankful for that. Absolutely. If you had to 
deliver a message to athletes right now and then of course young athletes that are looking to pursue any kind of dream in any sport at any level what what's the one thing that you feel should be communicated to them as far as helping continue the legacy that Kobe built oh man just hard work and dedication you know uh Kobe really just embodied that you know and um one of the things I think that's carried me in my career is not always being the most talented or biggest or fastest, but always having um, a hard work ethic. You know what I mean? And um, that's something that you can that you can just get from watching Kobe videos or hearing Kobe stories about him getting to the gym, you know, three hours early to shoot up shots or shooting major shots on game day and stuff like that. And you know, just keeping it going, you know. Uh, Perseverance and hard work, that's really that's really the message that you can get from Kobe. And um I'm very thankful to be able to have have uh, learned that message for myself because it's carrying me into other places in my life. All right. Sports, you know. All right, man. Well hey, I think uh very well said and obviously the world uh, without Kobe is is just different. You know, I, I think uh, if you don't follow basketball you, you had to know who Kobe was just because of everything that he was starting to do off the court now with retirement. And it's huge shoes to fill. Uh, you know, I don't know if there will ever be somebody like him as far as to do what he did in such a short amount of time. I mean, 41 really isn't that old, right. you know, which makes it even more right. tragic. But hopefully, you know, guys like LeBron or – um you know, maybe even one day Zion, you know, that just to throw out a couple names there can can hope right. to have a similar impact. But, uh, hey, man, I do want to thank you so much for being on. I know it's long overdue, and, uh, you, you know, your dad was a real kick down in Texas. So uh, he's like, got to have Omar on soon. I was like, don't you worry, man. I'm, I'm, I, I've got him on my books. So glad that we could talk some yes, some strike force, some football, and then uh, share a, a Kobe memory. But uh, best of luck to you this season, man. I know we'll talk again soon. Absolutely, man. It's a pleasure to be here, man. Absolutely uh, great talking to you. And um, I'm sure we will definitely be talking during the season for sure. All right, man. Well, you take care of yourself. You have a good night. All right, man. You stay blessed. And one more big thank you to Omar Cook for taking the time to be on the show this evening. Uh, like I said, long overdue, but he's always a lot of fun to, to chat it up with. And so that will do it for episode 446. Man. 446 and uh one of our last ones for the month of january we got one more and that will be our official super bowl preview i've got a very special guest lined up for that one we're going to record tomorrow night just to make sure that we get it for thursday so don't forget all new episode the super bowl 54 preview episode thursday at seven six central so <laughs> remember give me a follow give me a like give me a listen give me some love Social media, follow me on Twitter at Fanshow Official. Like me on Facebook, facebook.com slash Fanshow Official. You can follow the Instagram account, which is The Fanshow. And there's a YouTube channel. There's links all over the place to help you find that. And we've got some great content on there. Content not available on Twitter. Some of it is available on Facebook. But of course, uh, we are uh, actually once again working on getting a website up and running for you guys. So. Can't wait for that. And then if you weren't able to catch us live on Facebook, which is the simulcast every Tuesday and Thursday at 7, 6 central, then make sure that you are subscribed and you download all the episodes, iTunes, SoundCloud, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and of course, Spreaker.com. So remember, it's not official unless it's fan show official, and we are officially out of here, Fan Nation. So until next time. Best of luck to you and yours. Go Niners, and remember, it's all fun and games until you butt fumble. Good night, folks. Do you remember the time that Mark Sanchez ran into his one player's butt? That was funny sports. Thank you for having me on the show, man. I love the fan show. <laughs>